Matthew and I are really not going to say very much because we're here really to cover this meeting as journalists. Um, we just want to let you know that since Monday, really before Monday, but especially since Monday when the first story aired, we have been, been bombarded with emails and phone calls from people with so much new information about this issue. People who worked at the site, people who live around there, people who've studied it, people in government, um, people who have different viewpoints about the issue. We want to hear from everybody. We have gotten so much response that it's going to take us a while to get back to everybody, so be patient. But one thing we do want to say is this, these first two stories were really only the beginning because I think the one thing we've learned is the more we learn, the more questions there are to be answered. And we're getting more and more of those questions answered every day. And this will be an ongoing project for NBC. So stay tuned. Yeah, there, uh, Matthew reminded me, we, as some of you know, we shot so many hours and hours of the interviews in the process of our research. We accumulated so many thousands of pages of documents that a lot of the material didn't show up in the first two stories, but some of it will show up in stories in the near future. So again, stay tuned. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to call up some of the people who were in um, the uh, segment. And if you said that you can come and I don't read your name and you want to come on stage, let me know. But I'd like to call up Ralph Powell, Denise Dardarian, Krista Slack, Jessica Gassell, Brenda Dearborn, Melissa Ospina, and Marianne Salser. I've been coming to these meetings now for years. And uh, my daughters are the Salser sisters. And the first, my first, my youngest contracted thyroid cancer when she was very young. Then the sec, then my oldest daughter, and then Catherine, who is the one that swam in the water, and she and she's still fighting cancer. And so is Judith. And I'm so thrilled that this is finally coming out. I've been waiting for this for years and years and years and hopefully we will be able to get this thing cleaned up. Hi, I'm Jessica Gazelle. You saw parts of me in there, but when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And I battled thyroid cancer for two years in the hospital when I was four. And then I had a recurrence in 2003, and then last year I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. And I have no family history of cancer in our family, and uh, like you said, I'm so happy that so much is being reported now. Thank you to NBC for reporting so much about what many of us have been living as a nightmare for most of our lives. Um, I'm just, I'm really grateful. I don't have any tears left to cry after watching the reports this week, but now I've, I've moved on from my crying and my anger to really wanting to be passionate about making something happen from this. Hi, my name is Melissa. I live in the Santa Susana Knowles. I've lived there for 30 years. Um, when I was pregnant with my second child, I was on well water, and uh, my daughter was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma the day before her 19th birthday. And then this year, my youngest daughter, her best friend, which lives on our same street, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm -hmm. And something I, I just want to make people aware of is that if the contamination is not just in the Santa Susana Knowles. The contamination went down the hill through Brandeis, traveled through Simi Valley, into Moore Park, and other areas. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denise Sturdarian. Um, thank you, Joel, Matt, NBC for doing a phenomenal job because at times, you know, I'd be afraid are we just going to slip through the cracks and Boeing's just going to cover us up? No. Um, I grew up, I was born and raised in Northridge, and um, I went to Granada Hills High School, and um, some of my friends are dead from cancer. Um, my stepfather is, is dead from a 
some strange neuromuscular disease. He didn't work up at the SSFL, but he lived in various places, including the uh, mobile home park at the top of Topanga. He lived there for quite a few years. Uh, for me, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's an autoimmune disease that attacks the thyroid. I also had problems with ovarian and reproductive cysts to the point where it left me unable to have children. Um, I just came from my endocrinologist today. Um, they had done a biopsy and uh, ultrasound on my thyroid. The good news is that I'm cancer free. The bad news is my thyroid is dead, gone. It's, uh, so I'm going to be on medicine for the rest of my life and I will be monitored every six weeks. I'm still digesting this, so um, it, yeah, it makes me mad and I might go home and cry about it, but that's just going to galvanize me more to fight. And I'll be fighting for this and for all of us and for my stepdad and my friends who are no longer here to speak up. I'll be fighting this till there's no more breath in my body. Thank you. Hi, my name is Krista Slack, and I was born and raised in Sydney Valley. Uh, eight years ago, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. There was no history of breast cancer in my family, um, and she died last year. Three years ago, I was diagnosed with what's called triple negative breast cancer, which is a type of breast cancer that the breast cancer gene is associated with, or it's been connected to African American society and the Jewish society. I have none of those factors in my family. Uh, my doctors have told me that I had better odds of winning the lotto than contracting this type of breast cancer and believe that it was because of the San Jose fallout. I've had many friends who have died because of this um, and I've seen the effects. This was something that was just whispered about when I was a child. Everybody kept it a secret and I'd really like to thank Joel and Matt for bringing it out in the open because there's so many people, especially with all the building that's going on in Simi Valley, who don't know about this or who are not aware of it. And when they move here, they're going to be exposed to it. And I think that's one of the main reasons all of us are talking about it today, is we don't want anybody else to have to go through what we've gone through. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ralph Powell. I moved to Simi Valley in 1962, and the same year I went to work for Atomics International. I started out on DeSoto Avenue, and in the mid-60s, I transferred up to Area 4, which is called the Borough Flats. And I had never heard of a nuclear reactor, and I didn't know anything about contamination when I went up there, and I was a patrol officer. I did experience mounds of buried stuff with a cross on them. I didn't know what was there then. I don't know to this day. I was engulfed in the explosions from the barrels that was blown up in the disposal pits. I was there and saw that. And before I forget it, I want to share a story of a fireman friend of mine who is one of the three friends that I have left living, told me that a famous cowboy rode his horse up to the property line and says, I'd like to speak to a supervisor. And he says, what is the problem, sir? And he says, I have 28 head of dead cattle down here that drink water out of this pond. Mm -hmm. So uh, he assumed that it was run off from this disposal pit, which it probably was. I was dispatched mm -hmm. through different areas of uh, contamination. I don't know what chemicals or, or what the things I did come in contact with. I have extreme peripheral neuropathy. They don't know what caused it. I don't know if that did it or if something else did it. But I have uh, lost my only son from leukemia. My wife had cancer. I had cancer. I can stand in my uh, front yard. The guy on my right died from cancer. The guy across the street died from cancer. The guy up the street, a fire captain, died from cancer. My neighbor now has leukemia. His only grandson has leukemia and his uh, wife has leukemia living right across the street from me. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something going on in Simi Valley. There was then, and there is now. And the sooner we get this mess cleaned up up there, the better off we'll be. Thank you. I'm Brenda Dearborn, and I was 
born here in Simi Valley in 1975. I lived here uh, until five years ago. Eight years ago, my mom was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer. It's a very rare form of breast cancer. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, two strains of it. Three years ago, my sister was diagnosed with a different form of thyroid cancer. I have cousins that grew up in Canoga Park and they had breast cancer. Um, a lot of their classmates, um, excuse me, also had many different forms of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Uh, and as far as my reaction to the studies on this, I'm just very, very grateful that it's being brought to light and something's finally being done to help get it cleaned up once and for all. And hopefully no one else will have to go through all what we've experienced. There are um, many environmental causes of cancer. Uh, there are many people who will say, you don't know where your cancer came from. Uh, and this, this goes to any of you, but what do you um, say to people um, when they, if they question you about you're looking at the Santa Susana Field Laboratory as a, as, a, as a cause? If they say, how do you know that's where you got it? I mean, obviously you don't know, but what is your reaction to those, those kinds of comments? But if you take all the statistics and put all the people together, there is just no other explanation. It's all the evidence that we have and the different forms of cancer and the rare cancers that have been performed. Um, one thing that we know about the firefighters up there at the Tuckety Brain Cancer, they died of all of them, which is a very rare form of cancer. Um, there's no other explanation for it um, except for the fact that there is such a contamination in Simi Valley. I've never been questioned. Whenever I tell anyone or anyone asks me, you know, where, where are your scars from? Or, I mean, most of my close friends and family don't even see my scars anymore. And when people ask them, how does Jessica have scars? She had thyroid cancer as a result, as a result of rocket eye. And it's never been a question. There's, there's, like you're saying, overwhelming evidence showing that there is profound <coughs> connection between the types of cancers that are showing up in Simi Valley and the field lab. Can I make sure that you're talking to the lab? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just go ahead and talk into the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when people ask me about it, I tell, I tell them that it's very, number one, there's never been any thyroid cancer in my family, or anything with the thyroid. Here I have three daughters and myself with precancers. Pre and we lived in that community for, well, I had that house for 39, 49 years. Catherine, my middle child, was born in 1959. She was three months old when the first meltdown occurred. And we lived in Canoga Park at that time. Now this is this house with another one. And everything points to it. And then I started researching for myself. And I found out that perchlorate is one of the chemicals that creates, and they was used in cleaning the, um, the rockets. And that's one of the chemicals that's very, uh, that will cause thyroid cancer. And perchlorate was used extensively during that time. When I lived, it was a rental house. It was up in the hills. I thought it was great because I could have chickens in a garden, and I moved to the area because the house was $200 a month rent, <laughs> and I had no neighbors for miles except for down a dirt road. Um, when people ask me, do I think my daughter got cancer from the neighborhood, uh, from Rocket Iron, about 90% of me says yes, 10% says everybody needs to stop spraying for bugs in their yards. Um, but I was pregnant. I already had my daughter, Noelle. Um, she was two at the time. We had built a little homemade swimming pool for her outside. I had chickens. I had a vegetable garden. All my vegetables grew weird. Um, leaves would come like directly out of the tomato or something. They would grow in tight clusters. Nothing was normal. 
Um, my chickens didn't lay normal eggs. They laid what um, are called fairy eggs. They're extremely small eggs. Um, my daughter, Noelle, had to have dental surgery done at UCLA Dental Center when she was two years old because her teeth literally um, just turned to, to gum. They were, you could just take pieces of them off. It was terrible. Um, they had never seen anything like that there. The water ran directly from the facility, which I have now walked from my old property up to the house, um, or from my old property up to Rocketine, and it goes directly, the wash goes directly up the hillside to the facility. So there's, the only thing I can think of is, yes, it did cause my daughter's cancer. I was pregnant with her. The cancers that it, that it caused up there are lymphomas, and now there's been two in our neighborhood. My daughter and my other daughter's best friend. So, and when I went on my, when I, I got a private walkthrough at Boeing, um, Boeing was there, Rocketine, EPA, the DTSC, I got a private walkthrough there, and I was repeatedly lied to while I was up there. I was told that in one area I said, um, you would only dug four feet down and you sandbagged this area where you knew contaminants were thrown, but yet you left, you left an oak tree right in the middle growing up. And they said, were we supposed to cut the oak tree down too? And I said, yes, there are animals that will eat the acorns off of it. And they said, no animals ever come up here. And at that moment, I turned around and I looked behind me and they had caution tape around the big launch area and there were five deer in there at that time. So being lied to and then looking at the research that's been done and it's already been proven, I think it's just a given that we all have a really big, big problem here because of rocket iron. Uh, speaking about, uh, you know, when she was pregnant, uh, my mom got pregnant with me in early 1970. And throughout 1970, she's drinking this water, even though they stopped the water from coming up in that area. Those pipes and the ground around it are totally contaminated. So they're not going to tell pregnant mommies, don't drink that water. And my mom drank that water and bathed in it. and. You know, who knows what got transferred from her system through the placenta to me. Um, it's not just the cancers. The statistics for autoimmune diseases are astronomical, including in thyroid diseases. A lot of my friends that I went to school with are also battling autoimmune diseases, um, including Hashimoto's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, Sjogren's, Graves' disease, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't have any family history of Hashimoto's or ovarian cysts. And, you know, the statistics don't lie. You know, like when my stepdad got sick with a neurological disease, you know, where did it come from? So the, the contamination, it spread far east, not just Chatsworth, but Northridge, and Granada Hills, Mission Hills. Uh, North Hills, and you know, there a lot. Like I said, a lot of my classmates are sick now, and some are gone. So they they need to stop lying and stonewalling and, and start cleaning it up. They can more than afford it. One more thing. One percent of our water in Simi Valley is still groundwater from the wells. So people might want to check into that too.